Hello, viewers. I'm Daniel Kasahun with Addis News Hour. The 36th ordinary session of the Executive Council of the African Union has kicked off here in Addis Ababa at the African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa. The two-day meeting was opened with a welcome remark by the chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musa Faki Mahmoud. The Executive Council will consider the draft agenda and the draft decisions and deliberations of the Assembly with appropriate recommendations for consideration by the heads of state scheduled to take place from February 9th to 10th, 2020. The meeting of the Executive Council brings together all the ministers of the 55 African Union member states based in Addis Ababa as well as AO officials. watching at this news hour. Ethiopia's role in the process of establishing the Organization of African Union was irreplaceable. On top of that, the country served as a convenient venue for leaders of the continent to deal continental matters for the past 57 consecutive years. The country remains committed to continue its reserved effort in facilitating platforms for a better continental cooperation. Malil Jorge presents Dait Malak's file. The age old continental organization has been toiled to nurture fraternity and unity among African brothers and sisters since its establishment. The inception has lived within African governments and peoples for more than half a century. The journey of African unity has never been easy nor was it full of triumphs. The organization has passed through many ups and downs to reach where it is today. Ethiopia's role in realizing such a huge continental organization was immense. Yeah, African salami Ensuring peace in the continent continues as a priority for the organization. When it comes to the prevalence of peace, it is not about deadlines, but it would be an issue that matters most to us. Take the Ethiopia peace deal. You can imagine its impact to the region at large. The successful power transition process in Sudan, guided by the African Union Chairperson Musafaki Mohamed and Igar Chair, Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Yahamed, is a vivid illustration of the spillover effects of peace-building initiatives. Ethiopia has managed to offer the best platform for Africans to converge and deal with their own matters for the past 57 years here in Addis Ababa. When Ethiopia represented the continent in the League of Nations, it realized that coming together is the best option for Africans to overcome their problems. That initiative resulted in the formation of the Organization of African Unity. Our diplomatic relationship is still solid with our neighbors and other African countries. AU leaders have converged in Addis Ababa as usual to consult mainly on peace and security issues that they should tackle. Speaking about the summit, Nabiat Getacho said Ethiopia will have its own decisive role in the union's effort to realize peace in the continent. The AU has clearly stipulated its clear vision of full-fledged peace and prosperity in the continent by 2063. So peace and security issues will top the agenda of this year's summit. Several world leaders, including prime ministers of Canada and Norway, as well as Secretary General of the UN and President of the State of Palestine, would attend the summit. Radicalism, terrorism and communal conflicts, cross-border crimes and organized criminal activities have challenged peace-building process in Africa. The Union envisions to silence guns by 2020 dealing with this all. The 2019-20 Legatum Prosperity Index reveals instability and insecurity are hindering 
Africa's journey to prosperity. And it's Africa Prosperity Report overview disclosed here in Addis Ababa yesterday. The Legatum Institute indicated that a lot remains to be done to realize prosperity in Africa, though there are improvements year by year. Goshima Lusso reports. The London-based think tank Legatum Institute reveals its 2019-2020 Africa Prosperity Report overview here in Addis Ababa on Thursday. The institute, which envisions to help policymakers and governments pay attention to the progress of their country's overall development by providing annual prosperity report overviews. Prosperity in Africa overall is improving. As you say, 43 out of uh, 54 nations of the African Union have, have improved their prosperity over the last 10 years. However, overall prosperity in Africa is weaker than in other developing areas and this really is the reason why we've been keen to produce this report and start to get under the skin of what's happening here so that we can identify best practice and inspire potential for improvement. Though Africa has been progressing in the past few years, a lot remains to be done to meet all the prosperity index measurements. Appreciating Ethiopia's remarkable progress in health and education, Stephen pointed out that more efforts are needed to register success in other key areas. So the big strengths in Ethiopia that we see are the development of education and health. The investments not only by external players but also the government putting its own resources, its own organizational capacity behind health and education reform I think are a beacon for the rest of the continent to to look at and we've already been spotlighting this in our own work. There is a lot of work still to be done in terms of economic openness, um, improving enterprise conditions, how easy it is to start a business, making sure that the environment for investment is strong. These are all policy areas now that we feel that now that the government has established security that the health and well-being of people are developing, the next focus needs to be on unleashing the economic potential of the nation. Stefan added that insecurity and instability pose greater challenges for the continent not to prosper fast. So the main challenge to achieving prosperity on the continent is the continued issue around safety and security. Without a bedrock of safety and security and stability, economic growth is always going to be hard. Social well-being is always going to be hampered. So our view is the first challenge is establish safety and security, but closely followed by the need to make sure that civil society and the social contract are developed so that security is based ultimately on trust rather than force. Peter Robler from Horn Economic and Social Policy Institute for his part said countries like Ethiopia need to ensure peace to guarantee investment. Of course, all these factors need to be taken very seriously. There's a government policy has to be entrenched on some realistic you know, uh, factors. And as I said, uh, investment you know, uh, always looks for stability and guarantee that there is a certain environment that's very conducive to it. It's, this has been said so many times. And I think the, the environment that exists in Ethiopia today, of course, we have some challenges in terms of uh, some uh, particularly insecurities in some parts of the country. But by and large, I think the picture is very conducive for it. According to the Prosperity Index, Botswana came out as the best progressive nation in Africa, while South Sudan and Central Africa Republic are at the bottom list. The Minister of Water, Irrigation and Energy says Ethiopia is committed to sign the comprehensive document of the ongoing GERD agreement. The agreement document encompasses four major areas. It was disclosed during a press conference. Sintayu Tamrat reports. Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt have been in a serious negotiation over the $4 billion GERD project for the past eight years. Despite lengthy negotiations, the three Nile Basin countries have been unable to reach final agreement on issues such as water filling time of East Africa's biggest hydropower dam. Over the past couple of months, however, the three countries have been holding the negotiation in the presence of the two giant observers, the U.S. and World Bank. During a press briefing here today, Minister of Water, Irrigation and Energy Seleshi Bekele said the latest version of the eight-year-long agreement document encompasses four fundamental elements. We are dealing with four distinct documents. The first one is what they call Annex 1, which is a technical document uh, that is more or less done sorting out our differences. 
there are there were minor issues that are postponed to be resolved and some of them were resolved at 11 hour therefore uh, the remaining issues are not significant the remaining three items include legal provision uh, issues related to conflict peaceful settlements of uh, differences uh, issues uh, also related to coordination mechanism and data exchange. Seleshi told journalists that the agreements will not affect Ethiopia's right of using the water in the future. Some seasoned Ethiopian legal experts have been recruited, Seleshi said, adding they are working exhaustively on the preparation of the legal frameworks. Although Ethiopia could negotiate on some articles of the technical document, the legal aspect has issues that need to be amended, Seleshi said. That explains why meticulous preparation is being made in a way that will maintain Ethiopia's interest over the Nile, Seleshi mentioned. The minister also said Ethiopia will not sign any incomplete document. Seleshi further said the comprehensive document, which is under preparation in Washington, could be signed soon or by the end of February 2020, depending on the pace of completion of the legal framework. But Ethiopia is committed to sign the agreement only if both the technical and legal frameworks are ready. Will be ready until next week, uh, and if there are uh, uh, minor differences, uh, the ministers will resolve them. Again, uh, a three countries meeting, uh, whereby uh, the World Bank and uh, the US government uh, observe uh, the discussion. Of course, we, we are committed to sign, but we sign a, a real and uh, all-inclusive document, not piecemeal. A piecemeal may contradict with one another, therefore we want to see all the documents are actually crystal clear understandable for all of us, doesn't uh, open a space for misinterpretation. Therefore, we want to see the legal, the conflict resolution, and data exchange coordination mechanism. So we are confident that uh, our uh, three countries team, uh, with the presence as observers and supporters of this process uh, from US government and World Bank, uh, will arrive at uh, converging document for all of us. Moreover, Slash indicated the pressure the four parties are experiencing along the course of the negotiation because the decision to be made is a serious one. Uh, pressure felt, of course, pressure is everywhere. Uh, pressure is there on, on uh, negotiators, pressure is there on the country, there is pressure on other countries. Uh, this is a serious matter that uh, we have to look into not compromises but win-win actually that helps each country uh, finding those win-win creates a lot of pressure uh, in principle Ethiopia is always committed to equitable and reasonable utilization without causing significant harm therefore uh, taking into account also huge benefits that GERD brings to the region I think we have very good solution for all of us some phases of filling the dam include phase one, during which 4.5 billion cubic meters of water could be filled for initial generation are never open for negotiation, it was disclosed.